In this video, we're going to look at red teamers and how they're beneficial in cybersecurity. We'll then look at what specific tools they use to hack into their targets. If you're interested in a follow up video on blue teamers, leave a like down below on the video. Just remember that everything is for educational purposes only. So what exactly is a red team? Well, red teams act like real world attackers. So they'll essentially simulate sophisticated cybersecurity threats to test an organization's defenses. They think and operate like potential hackers aiming to bypass all security measures without being detected, of course. Their activities are typically mission focused where they'll have clear objectives like breaching specific data or accessing critical systems or even just testing the response times of the blue team. And also red teams will launch surprise attacks to provide a realistic test scenario. So essentially it's like a real attack but you get to learn from it and also they won't take it too far to bring your organization down. Then to actually do all these activities what they need to do is conduct in-depth penetration tests to find vulnerabilities in network systems and applications. This can include things like testing for weaknesses in both hardware and software as it's not limited. They'll use tactics like phishing, pretexting, or even baiting to manipulate individuals into divulging confidential information or performing actions that compromise the security. They'll essentially employ sophisticated methods like zero day exploits, pivoting between systems and maintaining stealth to mimic actions of skilled hackers. It's exactly what you'd expect on a normal day from hackers. It shouldn't be any different and it should always be something that you're not expecting. They should be able to attack you from any way possible and use any means necessary to get in. Of course, unless you've outlined something at the beginning that you don't want them to look at. They should be acting as hackers and just going for any means necessary. So you might now be thinking after hearing all that, what's the point? We're just basically getting hacked. Well, there's a lot of benefits that you can get out of red team testing or penetration testing. And that the first one can be to reveal weaknesses and enhance incident response. So by simulating the real world attacks, the red teams will help an organization identify and prioritize vulnerabilities in their security posture. And it'll also enhance the incident response as it can provide practical scenarios for testing the effectiveness of incident response plans and teams leading to improved reaction times and strategies. If you are experiencing an attack, you can learn from that if you've had a bad response time. So that can teach you a lesson for next time, how to react and respond in such an incident. So you can learn from this and see where your weaknesses are or what vulnerabilities there are for you to fix for next time. Then secondly, red team activities also raise awareness about security among employees often leading to better security practices and a stronger security culture within the, within the organization. There's been many examples of where a red team have conducted their activity and it's just raised awareness generally among employees as they know it's going on and they then start to learn more about it. So that awareness is a very key and important factor, even if it's not directly affecting all employees. Finally, we then have a main one of identify potential risks and regulatory non-compliance issues. What that means is red teams help organizations avoid potential legal and financial repercussions. That's because the red teams can make the company aware of potential issues that they need resolving as soon as possible or highlight key risks that the organization is partaking in. So now that you understand what a red team is and why they conduct the activities that they do, let's look at some tools that they use. Of course, there's a large amount of tools that red teamers can use and there's literally loads of different ways of using them. However, I've summed this up into three different ones just to give you an appreciation for what type of tools can be out there. So the first one is I'd like to talk about reconnaissance tools so that can be active or passive. So when we're talking about active reconnaissance tools, that means actively engaging with the target. So it could be things like speaking with employees, conducting port scanning, or even web application scanning. But when we talk about passive, we mean using publicly available information, such as open source intelligence. I have another video on open source intelligence tools, so do check that out if you're interested on passive reconnaissance tools. 
However, I'd like to give an example here of a tool called Sniper. A tool like Sniper is used for automated scanning and information gathering. It's designed to streamline the process of gathering intelligence about a target system or a network, which is a critical first step in any penetration testing or red team exercise. Before they go into any of the hacking, they'll want to conduct as much research as possible. So a tool like Sniper can be very beneficial. Next up, we then have a tool called Mimikatz. This tool is often used to extract sensitive information, such as passwords or credentials from a system's memory. It's typically used to gain unauthorized access to the network, systems or applications to obviously perform things like malicious activities or privilege, privilege escalation that can then later on lead to lateral movement within a network. So common attacks by this tool are things like pass the hash, pass the ticket, and if you're not sure what that is, well that's gaining unauthorized access without needing to know the plain text password of the user. Instead, the attacker uses the hash value of the user's password. So a very powerful tool that we've seen a lot in malicious attacks. The final one we then have is a tool called Bloodhound. This tool, which is really popular, uses graph theory to reveal the hidden and often unintended relationships within an active directory or Azure environment. So attackers can basically use Bloodhound to easily identify highly complex attack paths that would otherwise be impossible to quickly identify in a red team scenario. So you can use Bloodhound to quickly gain that map or path to where you need to get to. You'll know that Active Directory is obviously a vital part of many IT environments. So for red teamers, having obtained a foothold into a customer's network, AD can be a real treasure trove. You can find paths to domain admin and gain access and control over crucial resources, as you can see as an example on the screen at the moment. This allows the attackers to show them paths for lateral movement towards part of the environment that they want to get to that may be less heavily monitored. So it shows them the best route that they need to go down so they know where to focus and put their resource towards hacking very powerful tool that's used by a lot of red teamers so definitely worth looking into if you've never seen anything about it hopefully that's been a useful quick video for you to gain information on red teamers like i said i will be doing one on blue teamers so if you're interested do click the banner above but if you're interested in talking about cybersecurity, do join my discord channel the link will be down in the description below where we talk about all things cybersecurity and just ask questions and help each other out Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please do leave a like down on the video. It massively helps it out and tells me that you're enjoying and you do want more content like this.